welcome to this week's episode of Scene. I'm Becky Kamina. And I'm Callum Norledge. Now, as you can see, Becky is back with us in the studio today. I'm back. How are you feeling? I'm feeling a lot better, thank you. Good. And I'm ready for today's fun-packed show. Cool, cool, cool. Because we do indeed, uh, we've got a lot. We've got a lot to show them. Uh, we're involving with a local busking debate. Uh, we are also taking a trip on one of Stratford's very own canal tours. Sounds exciting. Yes, and uh, having some delicious coffee mm. at the Monsoon Cafe. We're actually also going to meet the wonderful people involved with Gift to Lift charity. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to celebrate the life of Diwali. And we attended a gig at the Cox's Yard where some of the college musical theatre students performed. Cool, sounds good. So. Can't wait, let's get the show on the road. So, Stratford is a town that is famous around the world to play part of the arts and culture. It is indeed. And so amongst all the art galleries and the museums, you would have thought that we accept buskers. Mm. But do we? Mm, now that is the question. There's been a debate in Stratford at the moment whether we accept buskers on the street. So here is a VT of Carl Wheeler performing uh, his original song. My name is Carl Wheeler. I've been busking in, well, I started in Stratford um, about five years ago and I've travelled around uh, different places but I mainly busk in Stratford. It's, I've been playing since I was about 15 but it's uh, one of these things that sometimes you put it down for a while and then pick it back up later but it's a bit like riding a bike. <laughs> I have seen the, the debate, yeah, I heard about it from the local newspaper and it hasn't affected me personally but I think I think a few people have been struggling, there's been a few buskers that have been getting singled out, you know, and I don't think that's very fair, but um, uh, me personally, it uh, hasn't caused me any problems, but they, are, they do seem to be clamping down a bit on the uh, areas where you can busk. Uh. I can hear my true love, she is calling, and she sings to her. Skylark in the morning I can hear her My true love she is calling And she sings just Like the skylark in the morning So, what do you think about the topic? We'd love to hear your views um, So please don't hesitate to tweet us on at Scene at Stratford uh, or Facebook us on slash scene at Stratford. I hope we get a lot of views from you guys. Yeah. But Callum. Right. I don't know if you heard, but mm. in one of Carl's songs, he was singing about the canal. Right. Do you think it was about our local canal? Well, what a coincidence. Ooh. Because we have got uh, a VT to show you on the Canal River Tours company. So, should we take a look? We should. Yeah. If you want to, you may bring your own refreshments on board, or if you prefer, you can support a couple of local businesses like the Shakey's Ice Cream Boat or Stratford's famous Baguette Barge. If you would like to find out more, you can email info at canalandrivertours.com or you can phone, which is 01789 295 173 or you can search for Canal and River Tours Limited on Facebook or go to their website which is www.canalandrivertours.com Wow, that is a great way to spend your afternoon. It looks awesome. We, sh think? we should go there together. Yes, we an should. afternoon with us to take. Yes, it's Brilliant. a date. It's a date. There we go then. <laughs> uh, and obviously it's open all year round, which mm -hmm. is great. And also, on places to go, mm -hmm. um, a place where you can spend an afternoon is mm -hmm. the local roastery, which is the Monsoon Estate. Mm -hmm. And we actually went down there and we had a little taste of all yeah. the different coffees. So let's take a look. There, um, we've got two roasters there, we've got three actually, but the two main ones that we use, um, they're 
the, they're both um, what they're called drum roasters. Um, there's a couple of different types of roasters. There's fluid bed, etc., etc. The ones we use are drum roasters. They're a very traditional roaster. At their most basic, they're a cast iron drum with a flame underneath. The drum rotates, roasts the coffee, out it comes. Um, but they've moved on. They were the original roasters and they've moved on and they have little additions um, like Honeywell, um, flame con uh, flow controls, um, we have timers on them. So we can control the temperature a lot better now, control airflow a lot better and it all has an effect on the coffee. We supply um, our beans to coffee shops, good independent coffee shops. We've got a web shop, monsoonestates.co.uk, um, and we do some local markets, Stratford on Avon on Friday and um, Warwick on a Saturday. Monsoon Malabar, we sell an awful lot of that. It's an Indian coffee. Um, it's a very interesting coffee. It's quite spicy, earthy, and it's quite strong, which we thought would be um, a small segment of the market would be into really strong coffee, especially in the UK. But we sell an awful lot of it. Um, like I say, it's an interesting coffee. It's um, when they're drying the beans in the warehouses in the monsoon season, they open the warehouse doors and the moisture affects the bean. Um, it gives it a very earthy, spicy, um, strong, full-bodied coffee. Yeah, in our opinion, it works fantastic as a flat white because it doesn't get lost in the milk. It punches right through. Um, on a lighter side, our most popular would be the Ethiopian Yuga Shepherds, which is the home of coffee. That's where the original wild coffee plant started. Um, and that would be our next bestseller of, on a completely different type of coffee. That's probably more suited to filter cafetiere. Um, it's a little bit brighter, a bit more acidic and fruity, and it's an absolutely stunning coffee. So they're two extremely different coffees, and they're two very popular coffees. Yeah, it was quite funny, really. Uh, my wife Anne was on the market stall at the time, and she met Nadine, and sort of half jokingly said, um, we, we would, We'd be interested in sending some coffee to um, the Prime Minister, but not sure how we go about it. I'm sure there's a real security issue with sending a, 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 a food product. Um, and Kadeem said, leave it with me, and uh, Nadim, sorry, said, leave it with me, I'll see what I can do. And um, yeah, he appeared a few weeks later and said, um, I've arranged it, we can get some coffee to the Prime Minister. Mm, that was some good coffee. That was great, I love that. Oh got to love some coffee, don't you? We've got, we've got to go back there and get We're some more. We're definitely going to go back. Oh, I love it. And also, um, it's a really cool hidden gem it in is. the Warwickshire area. Yeah. So, Monsoon Estate, you guys should all go have a look. It's a great day out. Uh, speaking of day out, uh, what's happening in uh, the Warwickshire Ooh, area, Becky? I'm excited. I love this part of the show. Yes. So, if you're something for, if you're more into like the theatrical, like you want some performances, like yeah. a day out for the family, okay. you can actually go down to the Belgrade Theatre and guess what they're showing? What? Beauty and the Beast. And that is running from the 25th of November to the 9th of January. So we've got quite a while mm. to actually go buy some tickets go see it. Tell you what, so I love Beauty and the Beast. You'd be a great princess, like great beauty. Thank you. Facial figures. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Coventry is switching on their Christmas lights on the 25th of November at 5pm. Uh, so if you are in the area, uh, don't miss that. Might drive down, go see it. Yeah, why not? Also in Warwickshire, it's well and truly Christmas spirit because there's two Christmas crafts fairs. Right. So the first one's for you, Callum. Mm, so if that? you're not in the spirit and you're looking for like present ideas, mm. you want to get crafty mm. and try and get yourself in the Christmas spirit, down at the Coventry Transport Museum on the 28th and 29th of November, 10am right. to 430 you can go have a look, do all of that. Okay. Except you can't do the next one mm -hmm. because that's for 18s only and you haven't got the mental capacity. Ah. Yeah. Cheers. But that Thank you. over 18s is a special craft fair on at the Herbert Late on the 27th of November, 7.30 to 10.30. Sorry about be, that. You can be horrible to me, can't you? Sorry. Just, <sighs> truth hurts sometimes. Uh, if you want your Christmas dinner up to scratch for the big day, there is a Lost Traditions stir up on Sundays on the 29th of November, starting at 10 a.m. So don't forget your own pudding basin. I don't really don't know what a basin Becky. is, so I'd, uh, I'm just going to be clueless. Just don't uh, like, what do I do? But on Thursday, the 26th of November, there's the Stratford, Stratford upon Avon Christmas lights switch there on. Is. So. We, we can actually go down there. Mm. We can make a day of that as well. Yeah. And everyone who lives in Stratford should go down. So let's take a look at last year's.
much going on at the moment in Warwickshire. So much to get through. Yeah, so I think I'm in need of another coffee. That's a good idea. So uh, we're going to have a drink. We will see you after the break. Scene. This is the second half and I hope you're ready for an action-packed show. Mm. Yes, indeed. Now, last week uh, we showed you a video about uh, the story of Alex Hopwood and yeah. her amazing charity to gift a lift. Um, here in the studio last week we were very privileged to have Alex's family and trustees of the charity, Laura and Jackie. We did. So let's take a look. Yep, so I'm Laura from uh, Gift to Lift. I was Alex's cousin. Okay. Um, the charity was started by Alex while she was in hospital going through her treatment for leukaemia. Um, she basically wanted to be able to give something back and offer a positive to other patients to pick them up. Um, so she started creating jewellery and headbands um, to sell these in order to make a small amount of money to be able to buy a wish with to give to other patients. So that was how she came about it and how the name A Gift to Lift came up. Um, it all like fits in person. very well. Yeah, she was. So what have you guys done in the past and what have you already achieved? Well, we've, we've done quite a bit of fundraising already. We've done our own events plus other people doing sponsored events for us. Yeah, like runs and marathons. Um, lots of people want to get involved now, don't they? With all different Have there sponsored been a lot of participants then? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, more so you about the summer and things. This yeah, year. This, um, we even had um, three lads biking from London to Paris. Yeah. That was wow. a big achievement. That was a big achievement. And then also a guy doing a triathlon, Ironman triathlon in Mallorca yeah. in September. Um, plus Wolf Runs, Ben Nevis Challenge, yeah. um, biking from Leicester to Skeggy, you know, so lots of people are doing... big challenges, not just... Quite a few people yeah. are doing it to help raise yes. money for you guys. Yeah, yeah definitely. So everyone's pulling together. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. really nice. So what are the goals you guys are looking to achieve with the charity? The charity's got three, three aims that we're covering, and one is to give wishes for patients at the hospital. We're covering the two Nottingham hospitals, the Leicester Hospital and the two Birmingham Hospitals, yeah. and they would be to, to, for wishes for patients of all ages. Uh, our second aim is that we um, help towards blood cancer research, so we support Bloodwise, which is the charity that um, continues the research into cures, hopefully one day for that, um, so we donate so much monthly to those. And then our very big main aim is to hopefully buy a holiday home in Norfolk, for blood cancer patients to go to with their families um, to spend quality time weekends away. And you might say, why Norfolk? Yeah. <laughs> and Norfolk was when Alex first relapsed after her first bone marrow. We went up to Norfolk just for the weekend a few days before she had to go back through all treatment again and she fell in love with it and she didn't want to come back and so that was her goal then was to get an holiday home in Norfolk. So That's where the real goal began. Yeah, yes. so the people can go and enjoy it as well. Yes. Being Alex's mum, has it been hard for you carrying on her legacy? Um, it's been a good comfort actually. It's, it's kept me focused, kept me busy and, and, it, and it's gave me something to strive for, you know, and I'm striving for our aims and, and I think it's been good for all of us, not just me, for our friends, you know, that are all involved and because it keeps her alive in our memory but we think of her every day but we also know him, we're doing what she wanted to do. So it's been really good. So it's like you're working with her every day? Yes, yes it is, yes it is. It's, it's rewarding, you know, not only knowing that she'd set it up, but knowing that we're helping people that she wanted to be helping herself, so. It's a really nice cause. How much you guys have raised so far and what can the audience at home do to get in touch and help okay. out? Yeah. We've, we've reached £60,000 so far and um, the audience, I mean, they go on the website, we set up a golden giving page if they want to do any sports events or anything like that or just run a coffee morning. We actually do gift to lift parties with our products as well and yeah. some bits that we buy in as yeah. well, don't we? So and they've become really quite popular or do fates with them or they could have a coffee morning have some of our products there or whatever or do a sponsored run or marathon or, or just you know, buy some jewellery offline or yes or go onto anything. the website and just look and you could actually buy anything on it what is the website uh, www.agifttolift.com 
So everyone at home, I hope you go and have a look at their sites for a great cause. Thank you for you guys coming in today. It's been you can donate online on their website, which is a agifttolift.com, and you can also see what you can do to get involved in the next fundraiser. Now, scene have been down to the famous Sikh and Hindu celebration Diwali, so let's take a look at how it went. Diwali basically is a Hindu and Sikh festival, right? So, um, it's celebrated every year, and there's a good, big story behind Diwali. It's, um, it's a wonderful story about a prince and a princess. And uh, that's, that's the story behind it. Um, it's about Prince, Prince Rama, Princess Sita. Um, they live in Ayodhya in India, a long time ago, centuries ago. Um, and the Prince and Princess are both sent to the, uh, the forest in exile by um, Prince Rama's stepmother, who's rather wicked. She's rather jealous of him. Uh, he's very popular, uh, he has every respect. And she basically wants her eldest son to become the king. She's hoping that, you know, the Prince Rama, he's. Uh, They'll be eaten or killed in the forest and the jungle. Um, but what actually happens is that in, um, in the forest and jungle, the princess, she's uh, kidnapped by um, a demon, demon king named, named Ravana, uh, with ten heads. Uh, and the story, as the story unfolds, Prince Rama encounters many, many, many different characters, such as uh, talking monkeys, uh, other wise animals and creatures. And so uh, what happens is that they all gather together and rescue Princess Sita. What kind of activities go on during the Diwali festival? Okay, well there's lots and lots of um, festivities and activities that happen. Now Diwali um, takes place over a whole week. Yeah, so there's a whole preparation of it. You know, Diwali day, there's the morning prayers and the morning worship. People go out shopping, they go out for shopping for presents, uh, they go shopping for Indian sweets, so it's a whole preparation. And then during the day, uh, they'll go to the mandirs or the temples to pray and worship to goddess, the goddess of Lakshmi, Prince Rama, Hanuman. They'll go to the mandir, and in the evening they prepare all the food. They wear the best clothes, they might even go to um, the homes of relatives and friends, give out presents and exchange gifts. In the evening, they feast, they have a beautiful meal, and they have more worship, more prayers, and then they have fireworks. I went to that festival myself, and it was so amazing, such a sense of community with everyone. Yeah, it looked great. Uh, now, we went down and spent the night at Cox's Yard with our very own Level 3 business students who are fundraising for the SMA support charity with entertainment from our very own performing arts students. So, let's take a look. We're just doing a couple of songs from well-known musicals and a couple of songs from Footloose, which we're actually performing in a couple of months, yeah. in January. Uh, we're doing these musicals we're doing. We are doing ones from... Wicked, Les Mis, Cabaret, Ghost, Into the Woods. Right, yeah. so there's nine of us performing tonight, and we're all going to them this Yeah, we're doing some ensemble pieces and duets. And yeah, it's lovely. A good mix. Uh, so my name's Tom, and this is Sweet Tom. I'm Nicole. Uh, really, really business oh. level three at college, Stratford College. And for our business events unit, we've got to organise and have an event for our charity. So the event we've got tonight, it's a, we've got some musical performers as well. Um, and we've got a raffle from local businesses who donated prizes. And then we've had some donations like of perfume, handbags and things like that from Boots as well. The charity we're for <laughs> is Spinal Muscular Atrophy. Uh, it's a charity based in Stratford Avon, where we are, so that's really good, you know. It means good, good communication with the charity. It's not as much like a well-known charity compared to also a larger one, so we thought rather than helping what we like want to we'll try and help the smaller yeah. like, we'll ones just try and make them more. It, it is a national charity, but it's quite it's only national because it works in various different parts. Yeah, yeah, it's only like it's got two thousand likes on Facebook, so we want to get build momentum with it and hopefully see what we can do. We just try and help them out with Yeah. So yeah, I hope it's good now. We've got some great music, live performances all from college. And well done to all the students who are involved. Really good.
But now, last weekend we were shocked and devastated by the news of the terrorist attacks that occurred in Paris on Friday the 13th. Here is a video we put together for us to remember. Goodbye and thank you for watching Scene. <laughs> Merci. Merci aux Anglais pour cette magnifique Marseillaise.